Hello, everyone, and welcome to Vanish Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. This is episode 13. Uh, my name is Pete Castanis. I will be your host for this episode. And right now, uh, this program is brought to you by Kerplunk Toy. It was made from the Ideal Toy Company. And here is a commercial from the late 1960s. What would you call a game where you have to pull out a stick but not let any marbles fall? The more that fall, the more points against you. At first, it's easy not to kaplunk. Then it gets a little harder. And sometimes it's nearly impossible. What would you call it? Kerplunk from Ideal, the good game people. Okay, we are back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that commercial. Um, A lot of people remember that particular toy from Ideal, from the Ideal Toy Company. Um, I remember reading about the company headquarters was in Jamaica, Queens, New York. And I saw some photos online, and they showed the the factory. And the original building's still there, I believe. So that was interesting to look at. And I remember I bought this toy. Well, actually, my mother bought it for me. I I don't remember if it was Christmas or for her birthday. I remember seeing the commercials, and I asked her, "Can I have it? Can I have it?" And she did. She didn't understand what it was about, but. Uh, she bought the toy, and uh, I was about maybe seven or eight years old. I lived in the Roseland neighborhood in the 1970s, and uh, my brothers and I played it, and I remember the commercials. And uh, the original commercial is on YouTube. You can uh, see it there. And uh, it's still made. And uh, let's see, a uh, little history of that. It was uh, had about... Uh, had the plastic rods called sto- uh, straw. Had some straws and they had marbles. And uh, right now it's manufactured in England, not in the United States. And it was uh, first it was made by Ideal. Then I believe uh, Milton Bradley uh, manufactured and Mattel. And uh, now it's by Hasbro. So there were a lot of toy st- companies when I was growing up, and now they're not that many. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I loved, loved playing that game. And I remember seeing the commercials on television, uh, mostly on Channel 9 or Channel 32, uh, probably during Bozo Circus, Garfield Goose, Ray Renner, mostly, most likely Bozo Circus, I've seen it. So uh, they have a few on eBay for sale. I might buy it someday. We'll see. Okay. Today I'll be talking about a few things. Uh, some I posted uh, on my Facebook page at Van Chicago Land. And uh, let's see. The first one I want to talk about is Lum's Restaurant. And uh, I recently found a menu uh, from the 60s. And it was unusual because the menu was from a hotel. So maybe the, the hotel had a Lums restaurant in the lobby because usually their the restaurants were uh, on their own. And uh, that was unusual to see. So uh, I'll pull up the menu so you can get an idea of that. There we go. Uh, they had the usual. Uh, this was a room service menu, the usual breakfast. Now, the interesting thing about on the menu is the lunch, the luncheon menu which is your Lum Dog and Chili Dogs. And I've heard from people that the hot dogs at Lum's were outstanding. They were very good. And uh, and they had the, I, I don't know if that's true. They I think they had, it was beer based, you know, they drunk duck it in beer. Maybe it's true. I don't know. I never went to the restaurant. I remember seeing the commercials and there was one commercial. I remember with Milton Burrow and he dressed in drag famously. <laughs> And I think it's on YouTube, and then they have another one featuring Phyllis Diller. So they've been around for quite a while. And uh, let's see, it was founded in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 1966. 
And uh, no, I'm sorry. It was founded in 19, 1956 in Miami Beach. Excuse me. And uh, they expanded it. And I remember a few places in Chicago. Uh, I found a picture. There was one in Glenwood, Illinois. There was one in... Someone mentioned North and Wells in the Old Town neighborhood in Chicago. And uh, it was a very good place. Um, it's, it's a shame it didn't last very long. Uh, the last one that that was still open is uh, probably uh, in Bellevue, Nebraska. And it closed uh, about four years ago, in 2017. And um, the ones in Florida, they're gone. And uh, it, I was looking at something interesting, and uh, they had a photo or appearance of Lum's Restaurant in the 2019 movie The Irishman, directed by Martin Scorsese. i never seen the movie. My brother did. And, he, and I asked him, do you, do you see Lum's in that restaurant? And he goes, yeah, but I didn't notice it. Until you mentioned it to me, so that was uh, that was quite interesting. It was. Uh, I wish I went to eat there, but I didn't. So I'm sorry about that. All right. Next thing I will talk about is uh, a popular musical group called the Bay City Rollers. Um, the lead singer Les McKeon he passed away on April 20th. He was the, the lead singer. And uh, when I saw it, it was kind of shame. There were five guys, and they were originally from Edinburgh, Scotland. And uh, they were very popular in the UK, but then when they came to the United States, their popularity exploded as well. So um, I remember the songs on the radio. They used to play them on WLS AM, WCFL. And uh, I posted a WCFL uh, survey on my Facebook page which was funny, and it was the Bay City Rollers with Larry Lujak, the disc jockey, and uh, that that was quite quite interesting to see. And uh, it was from February fourteenth, nineteen seventy five, but actually it was seventy six. So somebody, when I found the photo, there was a typo. So the, their their songs were very popular. And uh, I'll, I'll read a few of them, if you remembered. I'll look up at their discography. And uh, let's see what we have. So here we go. So uh, one of the most popular songs is, of course, Saturday Night, uh, Money Honey, and Rock and Roll Love Letter, and I, and the, um, the, rem the remake song from Dusty Springfield, I Only Want to Be With You. And... Uh, the last top five hit they had was You Made Me Believe in Magic, which I liked that song very much. And I remember uh, growing up in the 70s, the girls were crazy about them. I don't know if they were crazy about their music or the way they look. I, uh, it could be both. And they were tartan. They always were tartan because obviously they're from Scotland. And uh, they played concerts in Chicago. They played at the Uptown Theater. There's photos of that. And also at the Erie Crown Theater. Uh, and also uh, they performed at Comiskey Park, which is guaranteed, guaranteed field rate park now. And uh, they had quite a lineup with other uh, uh, bands. So uh, I don't know when it was, maybe 76, 77, 78, could be around there. I have to, I have to find the ad for that. Um, Anyway, so it's a shame that the lead singer, Les McKeon, passed away. He was 65 years old, and uh, a lot of people were sad by that because uh, their music is timeless, you know. It was really timeless, and uh, I still I have a few. Uh, I have most of their songs on my Apple Music, still listen to it. And I remember their TV appearances. Uh, they, were, they performed at midnight at the mid... Uh, How's that called? The Midnight Special. And uh, it was on Channel 5, Midnight, of course. And uh, there were a lot of great acts there. And a funny thing about it, they had their own TV show in 1978. It ran for one year on NBC, WMAQ, Channel 5. 
And uh, it was, first it was called the Croft Superstar, Superstar Hour. And they featured the, um, what was it called? The Captain Cool and the Kongs. I remember them. And uh, they were replaced by the Bay City Rollers. I guess they were just hot. They were very hot. And then, um, so they, uh, I remember seeing one or two episodes. They, they're not actors. So they, you can tell they were wooden, but uh, they did have appeal. And there were segments. There were two segments called uh, Horror Hotel and The Lost Island. And they fe- featured uh, people from... Uh, the TV shows HR and Puffin stuff and Lidsville. And uh, the characters from HR and Puffin was Richie Poo, Seymour the Spider, Orson the Vulture, Stupid Bat. I remember that show. It was hilarious. I have it on DVD. And uh, you showed one character from Lidsville, which was Hoodoo, the magi- magician. Uh, he was played by Charles Nelson Riley. I have that show on DVD as well. And. Uh, Witchy Poo and, and Hoodoo make me laugh. Oh, they were funny. They were insulting to other people. Which made, they made them so charming. And uh, they also had from Sigmund and the Sea Monster. So Sigmund appeared. I remember that. So uh, like I said, they only ran for a year. Uh, I think they broke up in the early 80s. and then, But they played. They reunited and played uh, together. And... Uh, I read somewhere they they performed at PJ Flaherty's on West 95th Street in Evergreen Park. I don't know if anyone would remember that. Uh, so I don't know if it was the original uh, members there. Maybe there were. Maybe there weren't. I don't know. So uh, I'm sure they drew a crowd like that. So it's a shame that, uh, like I said before, it's a shame the lead singer died. So I, I love their music. I still do. Okay. Something, uh, another thing I will talk about is the community discount stores. Now, I posted a photo about a couple, about a couple of days ago, and it was, uh, there was a store that was located, um, about Montrose and Harlem. Now, this is what, uh, some people said it was not there, it was near Lawrence, but this is where Harlem Irving Plaza is located now. So when I found the photo, I guess the person who took the photo or and wrote the information that this was located at 4401 North Harlem, but in reality it was 4701 North Harlem. So that's kind of a discrepancy. It's a discrepancy, all right. So um, I had tried to look at uh, research on it, and I and there was an Amy Joe Donuts next door in that photo, and the address for that was 4414 something like that so there was a, a, a community discount store so maybe it was closed maybe they moved you know it's possible a lot of people have said no i wasn't there yes it was so it goes back and forth i, I wouldn't know because i didn't live in the area i'm, I'm, I'm from the south side so um the company was founded uh, in 1946, his name was Larry Goodman, and uh, he opened. I think uh, what I say this. He uh, opened in Chicago, probably in the late 50s, in the 60s, and they were around for a long time until like maybe mid 70s. I remember some of the locations. Some some people told me it was on. Ashland Avenue, 47th Street, I believe. There was one at East 87th Street. And uh, there was one at uh, 95th and Ridgeland, uh, west of, across the street where is now Chicago Ridge Mall. There was a community store there. The next store was called the uh, theater, called the Studio Theater. There's a picture of that. And uh, right now there is... Um, there's a Dunkin' Donuts and there's a vacant store. I think it was a party center, party city store now there. Uh, so um, I apologize for the discrepancy of the address. So I don't mean that. I, I just see what I see. Okay. All right. So another thing I would talk about, I saved this for last, was uh, a post, a photo of, of a post, it was the Fireball roller coaster that was at Riverview Park. 
And uh, a lot of people love that roller coaster. Uh, one of their favorites is the Bobs. They like, they love that. That was their favorites, but uh, there were others. So uh, I rec- I bought a book about a few months ago. It was called Laugh Your Troubles Away, The Complete History of Riverview Park. And it's a very good book. It's still on sale on, e- on uh, Amazon.com. You can order it there. And I've read that book about three or four times. I can't put it down. I still love reading it. And I love, the <clears throat> excuse me, I love the history of it. So um, the information for the uh, Fireball, uh, it was first called the Skyrocket. And that was, uh, it was built in 1921. And in 1930, it was, and it was first, it was closed in 1935. And the following year it was called the Blue Street. But the blue streak was uh, it was built first, and then the Bobs took over that, and then the blue streak moved over and took over the Skyrocket, and it was there from 1936 to 1958, and then in 1959 they uh, redone it, redid it and called it the Fireball, and it was there from 59 until 1967 when it when Riverview Park closed. So. Uh, I found a photo of the fireball at for the year in 1967 when it closed, and it looked very uh, spooky. But it was a nice color photo, and what people told me that when they started writing it, they would dip down into a dark tunnel, and it was kind of scary and exciting, you know. And uh, that sounded like a lot of fun, but they loved the bobs. Because the Bob's roller coaster was very fast. The Fireball uh, roller coaster was fast too. So I posted a photo of the owner of one of the owners at Riverview Park. And there was a man, another owner, that he took a test ride on the Fireball. You would see it on when I published the uh, podcast. You would see that. And uh, so it was one of the most memorable. Uh, roller coasters, uh, Riverview Park, you know, there's limitless topics about that park. I will try to talk about that, that amusement park in future episodes, maybe the entire episode, or just break it down to roller coasters, other rides. You know, there's so many, I can't think of them, you know. And uh, like, for example, the jet stream, that was the last one that opened. There was the... Uh, parachutes so someday i will talk about riverview park uh i want to mention today six flags great america opens and uh it was closed last year due to the pandemic and uh what i know is from the news reports that you have to make a reservation online you can't just show up and buy tickets and uh you have to wear masks on the grounds and also uh, i don't know about the roller coasters uh we'll see or other rides so uh when you enter the park they will take the employees will take your temperature or if you're fully vaccinated uh maybe you don't need a mask you could just go ahead or with the person that's with you which is fine but i think once you enter the park you have to wear a mask so that's great that it's opening you know a lot of people are very eager to run. I know one particular person on the news that is, that's excited about it. I won't mention his name, but you will know who he is. And he's a, he's a very good friend of mine. So uh, that was funny. <laughs> so um, uh, I went to Six Flags twice. Uh, once was, uh, it wasn't called Six Flags. It was called Marriott's Great America. And it was in 1980. And I went for a few friends to where... I went to high school with, and they asked me to come. And I rode the, I believe the roller coaster was called the Demon. And I rode that, and, uh, you know, I took my glasses off because I've heard if you wear them, it'll fly off. So I did that, so I couldn't see anything when I'm riding. I mean, it was all big blur, but it was fun. Uh, I was nervous. I didn't get sick. And the other time I went to uh, Six Flags was 98 or 99. And uh, I worked for I worked at American Express Travel, and they had an outing, so I drove all the way from my house to meet people, uh, and I rode the uh, the roller coaster. I can't think of the name. Someone can help me with that. 
And uh, it was fun. I had my glasses off, so I was scared. And that was the only two, that was the only time, only twice I went to um, to Six Flags Great America. I've been to other uh, music parks. I went to Playland, that was located in Justice, Illinois. Uh, my church has uh, festivals every year. They have rides, but not roller coasters. But they had Ferris wheel. Uh, Tilt a Whirl, that's one of my favorites, and I used to love the Tilt a Whirl. Uh, they don't have the Ferris wheel anymore, so I remember riding that uh, when I was a teenager and I was at my church. Uh, they have the famous Ferris wheel on Navy Pier, and I heard it's uh, Navy Pier will be opening at the end of the month, which is good news for everybody. Okay, so that'll be all for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, sorry, I was coughing. My throat gets dry when I talk too much. So I'm so uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, like I said before. And uh, hopefully I, you will tune in to the next episode. Hopefully I will do one tomorrow morning. We'll see. Uh, so this is episode 13 of Van Chicago Land stories the podcast this is episode 13 and i am your host p castanis and i hope everyone will have a great day stay safe and i will talk to you soon bye bye for now